What's going on everyone? This is Jay from Premier Gaming Entertainment and I'm here to bring my analysis takeaway video for week two versus Western Michigan. Uh, I finally got a chance to watch the game. Fortunately I missed it live. I was at work. But I did get a chance to come home and watch it so I wanted to give you my takeaways and my analysis of the game. Uh, you know if you watch my predictions video that I made a few days ago. Uh, basically, I had some concerns that I mentioned in that video. Uh, for the most part, everything was actually handled as far as what my concerns were. Now, I'm going to still give my takeaway of this, even though we were playing Washington, Michigan, so you can kind of take all this with a grain of salt. It's not as I guess not as impressive as it should be, but still, any improvement is improvement from week one. So, my first concern was definitely our offensive line play, and um, definitely a huge improvement this week versus last week. Uh, with you know us, first of all, uh, you know, Western Michigan did get through and get a few sacks and a few hits on the quarterback. But nothing major, not anything that costs us really. Um, so they played all right as far as that goes. The running game was obviously huge, and you know they they actually they they actually did a good job with the running game as far as uh, allowing the runners to you know get nice creases, nice long runs. Um, Higdon, you know, he did his thing. Chris Evans did his thing. Um, so they were creating a lot of creases, a lot of holes, and uh, the running game definitely A plus this game, uh, two thumbs up. And uh, my also my second concern was wide receiver play. Uh, still not anything extensive or anything like that. But hey, I I didn't even realize that. It's been literally one whole year since the wide receiver had caught a touchdown, um, you know, for Michigan. Now that stat blew my mind. But we scored not one but two touchdowns with the wide receivers. Uh, Nico Collins again, you know, getting down the seam, getting a huge play. Uh, so I, I see that as being a theme. But I'd like to see them do that a little bit more often. You know, once or twice a game to me, I mean, I guess, you know, they got to take more shots down the field, more big plays. I know the whole theme is run the football, pound the football, then take your shot here and there. But they need at least maybe one or two more big plays or big shots down the field to really loosen up the defense. Everything is always constricted. Everything is always condensed. And there's not a lot of room for, you know, that, that's why you don't see a lot of big runs, at least you didn't, especially the first game. The second game, this game here, um, you know, different level of competition. So obviously the holes that weren't there in game one are going to be there in game two. But as we go along further in the season, you know, and maybe it could, could be just that you don't want to show anything against these guys, and I understand that. But we got to take more shots down the field. So, it was a good sign to see two touchdowns by the wide receivers. And also a good thing, Shea Patterson, like I said, I didn't feel that, you know, he played that, that bad in game one. But he played all right this game, three touchdowns, good completion percentage. Not a lot of completions, but what do you need them for when, um, you know, you're running the ball that well? So, he did enough to, you know, keep the defense honest as far as that goes. But hopefully we're expecting a lot more from him with his arm. Uh, so that was well. That, everything went well as far as that goes. Obviously scoring 49 points means that the offense was, you know, doing a much better job. Uh, defensively, uh, I kept hearing the announcers say that, 
you know, Western Michigan is this great offensive team. So I don't know. I don't know if that's necessarily the case, but they did have one wide receiver uh, that, from what I saw, had like 240 receiving yards last week against Syracuse, and he got completely shut down this game, only two receptions for 20 yards. So obviously something was done to shut him down. Uh, Overall, a much better effort on defense, only holding them to three points. Uh, So defense was back to what I expected them to be and if it weren't for one last drive and a and a penalty on offsides we would have shut them out but you know three points is darn well near a shutout so it's not a shutout but it's clo- as close as you can get so we'll take it so I thought defensively we play- played well um, you know we just came out from the jump and did our thing. One thing that was concerning was not a big push from the offense, uh, not offense, but the defensive line. Not a lot of pressure. Um, n- well, not as much as I thought there would be. And um, that, that to me, was kind of concerning. So we just have to wait and see and look and see how that goes. They actually got more pressure last week against Notre Dame than they did this week. So... I don't know if it's just that they couldn't get through or they were taking a, this week off or not taking them as lightly. I don't know. But not a lot of pressure, not as much as I thought they would get. So something to look at. Um, so, like I said, overall defense was really, really good. Um, so I give them an A. Uh, special teams, except for the, uh, the missed field goal, uh, A+. Plus, you know, block punt. Kickoffs were great, and uh, well, actually, th- that muff punt didn't really help either. Uh, but overall, the, you know, we played a very good game. Uh, like I said, it was Western Michigan, so uh, I-, I don't know what to take of it. I-, I mean, I'm happy we got the win, and you know, I would take a, this win over you know losing a close game, but. It's not a quality win, you know, but I, I'd rather get a forty-nine to three win than get a thirty-eight to thirty-one scrape by win, or you know, a you know forty-five to thirty-eight overtime win. Uh, so much more impressive, much more of what we expected. So we'll see what happens in week two, or not week two, in week three. We'll see how that goes and see if they can continue, uh, you know, to carry over from this week to next week. Uh, Dylan McCaffrey came in and looked good again. I, I feel that, honestly, he looks uh, he looks more athletic than uh, Shea Patterson does. And uh, every time he's come in, he's looked really, really good. Not only with his arm, but with his feet, too. Uh, he seems to be more inclined to run that that run pass option than Shea Patterson is. So definitely looking like he's going to be the quarterback of the future if Shea Patterson goes to the NFL. Um, so the, the future is looking bright as far as that goes. So anyways, that's it for the video. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, definitely uh, like the video. That uh, definitely helps out the channel. Leave, leave me a comment in the comment section below. Let me know how you felt about the uh, game today, whether or not it mattered, whether it was just another game whether you're impressed with how we played, whether you were not impressed, let me know in the comment section below. And uh, if you like my content, definitely subscribe to the channel. Uh, you know, like I said, I do two videos, one with my predictions, one with the analysis, and I try to do one video during the week about just some general things with Michigan football. So typically it's going to be three videos a week for Michigan football. So anyways, thank you for watching the video, and go blue.